वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर वी एस एस जी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डीलिंग विद द थर्ड पेपर नाइनटींथ सेंचुरी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर द मॉड्यूल वन and the title is the fundamental tenets of romanticism this module has been written by me and today i'm going to discuss various points related with the romanticism romanticism whenever we talk about it the first word that comes in our mind is romance romance like or romanticism it has got nothing to do with the popular romance or the sexual connotation of romance romanticism is a movement of the 19th century this movement was not only in england but all over europe romanticism is also known as romantic era romantic period and it was the movement it was artistic literary and intellectual now men felt a deepened concern for the metaphysical problems existence death eternity it was in such a circumstances that romanticism was born now as a literary movement it was very popular and the main important thing came in front of us in the form of poetry though it was not the only thing so its essential spirit was of revolt against an established order of things against precise rules against laws against dogmas and that characterized classicism in general it praised imagination over reason emotions over logic and intuition over a specific making way for a vast body of literature romanticism if we are going to define it then we can say in the words of charles baudrill that romanticism is precisely situated neither in choice of subject nor exact truth but in a way of feeling when we come to victor hugo who defined that romanticism is liberalism in literature so romantic in english or romantique in french it was adjective of praise for natural phenomena so in the word of frederick shigel we can say that literature depicting emotional matter in an imaginative form is romanticism this term was first applied by him only when he wrote in his dialogue on poetry in 1800 now romantic movement was responsible for dramatic changes not only in literature but also in art music and architecture in fact it changed into a new way of looking at the world first half of the 19th century is popularly known as the romantic period we call it romantic age also literary critics they consider that 1798 is the beginning year of the english romantic movement it is a year when wordsworth and coleridge published lyrical ballads actually it is started with gray Collins, Blake and Burns who regarded as a transitional poets it emphasizes freedom from rules spontaneity solitary life individualism and love of beauty specifically love for nature poetic diction is again an important thing because the writers they made change in the language of the poems and language of the literature we know romanticism as wordsworth's poetic encounter with nature and himself 
in the prelude. We value Coleridge's literary theories about the reconciliation of opposites. We also cherish the romantic posturing and irony of Byron. We can't forget the imagery of Keats and the Gothicism of Mary Shelley and Bronte sisters. So this is all part of Romanticism and Romantic literature in the 19th century. In this context, we also talk about a term known as Romantic Originality. Romantic Originality was the concept of the artist who was able to produce his own work through this process that is known as creation from nothingness. And this creation from nothingness is considered as the key to romanticism. So you must note that to be derivative was totally prohibited for a romantic writer. Now let us think about the characteristics of the period and characteristics of the literature of this particular period. So various points that must be kept in mind like fascination with mystery and the supernatural is a sign of the new romantic movement. Romantic poets invest traditional forms with new resources of emotion. Working and middle class people struggle to reform industry and the political system. In an era of revolution and reform, women struggle for a greater voice in society. Romantics take a new interest in common folk and their language. Many romantics see deeper or higher realities in everyday things. Romantics who value nature are alive to the natural sound textures of poems. A central belief of romanticism is the spiritual value of uncultivated nature. Now, let us talk about the fundamental tenets of Romanticism. Here we will concentrate one by one on various important issues and the points. And the first is intuition is favored over reason. The Romantic heroes are the common men who are just going away from the corruption and they are seeking truth. Next point is supernatural or mysterious. That is again very important for romantic text where supernatural in the form of dreams, vision, ghost, irrational or plot points with no explanation that comes in the mystery is always there. Individual thought and experience, they are very important for romantic literature. It is catering to individual and not to society. Unlike 18th century where society was very important, but in 19th century literature, individual is the main aim, the depicting individual, emotions, imagination that was very, very important. Now, emotions are the key to romantic poetry. They rule the word of romanticism and not reason and logic. Overflow of emotions, they take place. You remember the explanation given by Wordsworth that what is poetry? Poetry is the overflow of emotions depicted through romantic poetry. Spontaneity in romantic poetry, it arises from an emotional overflow. So that is importance of emotion is established as far as romantic poetry is concerned. Now, the German painter Caspar David Frederick stressed on the importance of emotion and said that the artist feeling is his law. What he meant by that? That artist should be governed by his emotions only. That is the only law that he follows. We can understand it more clearly by giving Wordsworth's definition of poetry where he says that poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility. Now, after this point, 
another important point is romanticism stresses on self expression then we will consider the other important tenets of romanticism and they are just catering to the sublime in this regard the important name to be mentioned is burke who saw nature as the most sublime object capable of generating the strongest sensations in its beholder now various cliffs ocean storm volcanoes waterfalls you will find the depiction of all these things in the romantic literature in plenty now with this the connected tenet is the supernatural we find the mention of supernatural element in romantic literature especially in the gothic literature it was the basis for the sublime so that's why the vampires the witches the monster you will find them just like imagine and think of mary shelley's frankenstein now imagination as every poet most importantly coleridge he has stressed on this issue of imagination because it is in the words of wordsworth poetry is the first and last of all knowledge so how it is the last of all knowledge because there is a key role of imagination so phenomena of imagination is the essence or the core of romantic poetry nature whenever we talk about romanticism we think of wordsworth whenever we think of wordsworth we think of nature nature a romantic poet can let loose her or his imagination in the process of interpreting natural phenomena it is important because nature provides the element nature is a living entity nature is the guiding force so nature is very very important for romantic writers the innocent that is another thing it makes us believe that we are innocent and society corrupts us that's why writers like wordsworth they believe in the capacities and capabilities of the child child is considered wiser than the adults and whose excess is always considered divine three great romantics shelley byron and keats without them it is impossible to imagine the romantic poetry now symbolism symbolism expresses so much in so little that the use of symbolism in literature allows to derive different meanings from a single expression individualism heroes are depicted as personalities which exhibit boldness although many people stress the notion of spontaneity in romantic poetry the movement was is still greatly concerned with the pain of composition of translating the emotions and responses from the individuals pastoral life how can we neglect it pastoral life attracted romantics to the great extent pastoral life culture traditions they are mentioned on a frequent basis in romantic poetry and contrasting features of urban life can also be depicted by the portrayal of the pastoral life now what are the typical literary forms of romanticism it is not only the sonnet it is not only the lyric but many more things because it was not only poetry that constitutes romantic literature so i'll just mention in brief the various forms used by writers that is the lyric especially the love lyric the reflective lyric the natural lyric lyric of morbid melancholy the sentimental novel the metrical romance the sentimental comedy the ballad the problem novel the historical novel the gothic romance the sonnet the critical essay now there were some other attractions of romantic age as well as i told you that poetry is not the only thing that constitute the romantic literature so other than poetry the romantic era was also rich in literary criticism and other non fictional prose 
For example, Coleridge proposed an influential theory of literature in his Biographia Literaria and it was written in 1817. William Godwin and his wife Mary Wollstonecraft, they wrote groundbreaking books on human rights and women's rights. William Hazlitt, who never forsook political radicalism, he wrote brilliant literary criticism. The master of the personal essay was Charles Lamb. We all know him as Prince of English Essays. Whereas Thomas De Quincey, he was the just the master of the personal confession. We cannot forget the periodicals, Edinburgh Review and Blackwood's Magazine because they were the major forms of controversy, political as well as literary. We have great novelists like Jane Austen who wrote during the Romantic era, but her work defies classification. Sir Walter Scott, who made the genre of the historical novel widely popular, also belongs to the Romantic age. Some other novelists also wrote beautifully and they have depicted the important tenets of Romanticism in their work of art. Wordsworth, Wordsworth was known as the father of English Romanticism. He said, let nature be thy teacher. Now, earlier romantics, whenever we talk about romantic poets or romantic writers, we can just divide them into two groups. The one is elder romantic and the other is younger romantic. So, let's talk about elder romantics. That the chief writers of the first generation were Wordsworth, Coleridge, Scott, Sade, Blake, Lamb and Hazlitt. The basic inspiration were that they were inspired by beauty of nature. The second important thing, they emphasized emotion and the imagination over reason and logic. And they celebrated the individual spirit. They were the earlier romantics or the elder romantics. Now the second group belongs to the second generation of the romantics. They are also termed as younger romantics. And they are John Keats, Percy by Shelley, Lord Byron and Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. Now when the things changes, the matter changed with the matter, manner also changed. A new style has taken place. Uh, the term romantic first appeared in the 18th century English and it originally meant romance-like. And when the writers started writing, so the major thing that happened was the abandonment of the heroic couplet in favor of blank words. The sonnet, the Spenserian stanza and the other experimental words forms. Goldsmith said, the dropping of the conventional poetic diction in favor of fresher language and bolder figures, the idealization of rural life. They are the main points of the style. Now glorification, personification and idealization of nature all was also there as major tenet of romanticism. Nature is viewed as a setting or a place which offers relief from the man-made world that we occupy. Remember Hardy. Use of co common language and diction. Now previously in 18th century, what happened that poets or the writers like Pope, they used a different kind of poetic diction that was difficult, that was not related with the common man. Just opposing that, Writers of the Romantic era, they used natural rhythms and expression in place of the grandiloquent and pompous language of the 18th century. In poetic forms, rhymed stanzas were replaced by blank words, which was unrhymed but still rhythmic. Poetry came to be regarded as the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions, so represented in the language of the common man. 
poets have completely avoided heroic couplet and replaced it with simple verse. Wordsworth believed that poetry should be written in the language of the common folk. And for him, there was no difference in the language of the poetry or in the prose. So it should be just uh, very, very easy and it should explain things which a common man can understand. Literature was not only for a particular elite class. Now, end of the Romantic period. When did it come to an end? There are various critical opinions and they are divided that when it actually came to an end. In fact, some critics consider the Victorian age to be the end of the Romantic period. They thought that when Victorian age approached, Romantic age did end. But some said that in between, we have two more things that is Parnassians or Symbolist movement. After that only Victorian movement came. So that is the era, that is the end of the Romantic period in somewhere in the middle of the 19th century. Now, I told you that Romanticism, we are discussing the Romantic era in England or for English literature, but it was there in various countries of Europe. It was there in American literature as well and the major characteristics of the American Romanticism that it reflects on nature to gain spirit, it finds beauty and truth in supernatural or imaginative reals and it sees poetry as the highest work. Now there is another thing that is known as dark romanticism. What is dark romanticism? Dark romanticism is related with pessimism. It is the philosophical movement came from transcendental and these works are notably less optimistic than the previous one. Representative of dark romanticism are Edgar Allan Poe, Hawthorne and Herman Melville. So this, is, this was there in the American literature. Now a quick recap what we have already done. First thing that you must note that the romantics, this was the term first used by later Victorian critics and not by romantics themselves. They designated the writers of previous time as the romantics. Next, the poetry was contemplated the most important literary genre of the romantic period, although novelists embraced many similar themes. New approaches of production and distribution made the written word available to more and more people. The big six, that is the term used by many, Blake, Wordsworth, Coleridge, Byron, Shelley and Keats, they were regarded generally as romantics. The heroic element mixed with revolutionary idealism created romantic style. Melancholy was quite a buzzword for the romantics. And the poetic diction of the neoclassical age was completely avoided and the language of the ordinary people became the language of the romantic poetry. So romanticism, it just degenerated near about 1830. Now, just to name the 10 basic tenets of romanticism, number one, don't forget it was imagination, then individuality and personal freedom, then emphasis on emotion and intuition, Gothicism, that is supernatural, glorification of rustic life, pastoral life and personification and idealization of nature, then rejection of reason and enlightenment, then celebration of the uh, simple life, glorification of nationalism and patriotism and most importantly use of common language. To sum up, I will just remind you the basic tenets of romanticism that you should take care of the importance of imagination, emotions, pastoral life, love for nature, use of common language by writers, especially by poets, gothicism and 
basically use of celebration of the simple life. So this is all regarding the fundamental tenets of Romanticism and I'm sure with its help you will be able to understand the Romantic literature in a better way. For more details, please consult the text and the references available on EPG Pathshala. Thank you.